In our last episode, Professor Daniele Del Rio explained what polyphenols are and why they are important for our diet. Then, how do we make sure to choose the right items when doing our groceries? We asked this to Professor Claudine Manac from INRE in Clermont-Ferrand. Welcome, Claudine, and thank you to join this initiative. Talking about food choices, which foods are polyphenols rich? Yeah, uh, all plant foods contain polyphenols, um, but the major sources are fruits and uh, all the beverages that are prepared from, from plants, uh, coffee, tea, red wine, hot chocolate. Um, it's important to have in mind that uh, there are different families of polyphenols that have different distribution in our diet. Uh, some are widely distributed and others are specific to one food group. For example, flavanones are very specific to citrus fruits. Anthocyanins are typical for berries, but you can also find them in red wine and in many plant foods that are colored in blue, red, or purple, like eggplants. Um, coffee is a, a very important source of what we call the hydroxycinamic acids that are also present in many fruits, in, uh, in uh, beans, and in some cereals. Uh, in a lesser amount. Um, we can mention the dark chocolate, uh, the apple and tea as the major sources of an important class of polyphenols, the catechins. Uh, the nuts and the pomegranates are the sources for uh, pomegranate, for, for sorry, for elagic tannins. And uh, uh, olive oils can also provide some typical uh, polyphenols. So basically, if you incorporate many plant foods in your diet, you will consume a large diversity of, uh, of protective uh, polyphenols, which is what the experts in the field do recommend. Um, and then how do we assess polyphenols intake? Yeah, the classic way is to use dietary questionnaires. So people are uh, asked to uh, recall, to report what they have eaten uh, in the last days or the last year. And then this food intake data are con converted into um, um, quantities of polyphenol uh, ingested using tables of food compositions. And uh, for polyphenols, we have two uh, reference uh, tables of food composition that are um, the USDA database and the Phenol Explorer database that you can find online. Um, but the limitation of this approach is the uh, imprecision of the self-reporting because people have difficulties to uh, precisely recall uh, what they have eaten and also uh, to assess the portion size. Um, so there is a completely different approach, which is, which is the, the quantification of the polyphenols and their metabolites uh, in uh, blood and in urine samples. And for that, we now have uh, performance methods using mass spectrometry. The limitation uh, is the cost and uh, the difficulty to really cover all polyphenol metabolites in a single analysis. But the interest is uh, that you uh, it reflects not only the consumption of polyphenols, but also uh, to what extent they have been absorbed uh, in the circulation and how they have been transformed in the body. So um, it reflects the true internal exposure to polyphenols. So if you want to assess the, the polyphenol intake and exposure, the best way, the best practice today is certainly to combine these two complementary approaches, uh, the dietary questionnaires and the quantification of polyphenols in biofoods. Thank you very much, Claudine. If you want to know more about ILSI Europe, go to www.ilsi.eu and follow us on social media. If you wish to know more about the health benefits assessment of this task force and activities, stay tuned for more videos or get directly in touch with us.